When we started the Smugglers Room, there was one aspect that we've enjoyed more than any, and that's meeting other builders and makers that share the same passion, or should I say obsession, that we do. We know many of you spend your nights and weekends tinkering and working on projects that just have a hold of you and won't let go. So today, we're gonna meet a builder whose projects keep him pretty busy. It's time for another Geek of the Week. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, this is The Smuggler's Room, and today we wanna to yet again share the work of another builder who has a lot of the common interests in sci-fi that we do. Hi everybody, and welcome to the Space Talk. <clears throat> the shirt, man. Not far enough. Oh, a little too far. Oh, that's more like it. Hi, I'm Darren, also known as Dr. Sci-Fi, and I'm gonna show you around my workshop. Now, today I'm gonna show you how I built these custom Death Star wall cabinet doors. But wait, let's start at the beginning. The Space Dock Garage started out as just an open space, installing insulation, uh, adding cabinets, workspaces, and finally bringing it into its finished form, or almost finished form, never fully done, uh, with the beautiful Death Star wall. And to begin that, I built up a blueprint using a Illustrator program to get the dimensions down and started drilling lots of holes. I invested in a corded drill as my cordless one would maybe get through four holes before needing a recharge. And this process took about an hour, hour and a half for each panel to mark the holes, drill them out, and then cut the space in between with a jigsaw. Now, they were all custom made of, you know, three feet wide and eight feet high. After baking in the sun a little bit, I was able to add some extra MDF panels to an offset wall to add a little bit more just to the, the look of the room. And then I started working on the light panels. So I got a semi-transparent white kind of reflector material and would staple gun that to the inside of each panel and it looked uh, pretty good and uh, now i didn't have enough <laughs> of course for every single piece so the bottom half of some of the panels is actually using a medium density shower curtain and this actually worked really well you get it taut with the staples and then run a heat gun at low setting about six to eight inches away and that lets you just let it uh, kind of tense up and get ready to install the lighting. So these each had five strips of LED lights that are all run off of a power brick and it really gives it that glow that you see in the Star Wars movie. It took a, a little bit of trial and error to get it to look like I really wanted it, uh, but I really do enjoy the light up effect. After building them, I put together a blueprint document which we will link down below that you can build your own Death Star walls. Uh, a custom application I installed was this panel in the middle that lets me hide my five foot by two foot foam sheets for crafting. And the inside of the door frame has spots for brooms and a couple of ladders that I have. And you can just open them and grab something from our pantry, whether it's food related or project related. Now let me share some of those projects that I've built here in the Space Dock. I really enjoy Star Wars costuming and not only doing you know human characters but also droids. Uh, my favorite character has to be K2SO, the lovable <laughs> droid from Star Wars Rogue One. And I built a functioning puppet full size 7 foot 2 that I can make walk, talk, Still working on upgrades as any good project has, but his head can turn, he can move his arms and legs and hands, and I just love how expressive he is. I love his salty character, demeanor, just the, the witty lines. Uh, he photographs really well, 
and I'm usually able to just kind of chill behind him while people take pictures. But the more expressive I can make him and the more I can enjoy just bringing him out into the world, it really brings me a lot of joy. And I just love tinkering with this big guy. Hello, I am K2XO. I am a reprogrammed Imperial droid from Star Wars Rogue One. One of my more recent projects is a full-size Imperial probe droid or Viper droid from The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, its body is almost oh, four feet wide and it's built over an aluminum extrusion frame. Uh, that's been a lot of fun just building like kind of custom brackets uh, with 3D printing. Uh, but again, his whole body is made out of foam for lightness and to allow him to eventually drive on a motored base. Uh, he's very big. Uh, figuring out where to store him is also a bit of a trick. But it's been really interesting just figuring out the compound curves and how to, you know, fabricate something out of foam at this scale. You can see here in one of his legs just all the detail you can get out of just EVA foam and a little bit of scoring and heating. Now, L337 has been such a fun project to do. I really enjoyed the design of this character from the asymmetry everywhere to, again, a fun, salty personality. And I started building this uh, hoping to take it to the solo premiere uh, at, at a theater somewhere and uh, just gathering, you know, greebly bits and cables and tubes, trying to figure out the scale. Uh, again, you know, compound dome curves, they really are enjoyable. But, uh, you know, sometimes you, you build things out of cardboard, like as a, as a mock-up, or sometimes that just becomes the, the actual pieces that you use. And this was, again, a lot of fun to, you know, just figure out and research and sketch in notebooks. That's one of the things I really enjoy doing is putting everything in a notebook and just constantly turning over the different ideas in your mind of like, okay, how do I solve this problem? Or how do I figure out this? You know, adding PVC pipe inside each other to give it a, a piston-like feel. Or, you know, do I want to walk on some sort of stilt? Or, you know, how do I fit into this object that partially was CGI and partially didn't exist in real life. Uh, again, not a lot of symmetry in this character. But she has a lot of found pieces, a lot of droid pieces, from the vents on the front to, uh, you know, the battery boxes on her legs. And I was able to you see the inspiration that was pulled from R2-D2 and other astromech droids that went into this character. You know, you can start with any kind of foam you want. You could use black foam or white foam or gray foam or <laughs> any kind of craft foam. It's just a lot of fun to put it into this object and shape it into to whatever you want. That's what I love about building in foam. One of the fun aspects of L3 was in my original design, I wore heels. I wore four inch wedges to kind of shrink the profile of my foot from 12 inches down to nine. And it gave a really interesting droid walk as I went. But it all paid off. It all came together at the 11th hour. And I had L3 and got to take her to the solo premiere here in Hollywood, California. And man, that was such a blast. I got to meet Phoebe Waller-Bridge, the actress who played uh, L3, not only in body, but in voice. And it just, it's great. It's been fun to pose with Lando Calrissian and, you know, all the other solo crew. And my beautiful wife, Maureen, came out to support me. You know, she's always been a, a great champion of Star Wars and creativity and just... I love her. I just love uh, just all the things that she brings to uh, our our equation. It's just a lot of fun to to take these characters out and about. Uh, but let's uh, let's look at let's Phoebe again and her reaction. <laughs> Oh, that was that was the best. Uh, honestly, meeting the person that plays your character is one of every cosplayer's dreams for sure. And, and flying the Falcon. 
Now, I'm also working on a BD-1 puppet. Uh, so far, it's just in the prototype phase. It's uh, really fun just to make that out of cardboard. You just throw something together. You can add 3D printed pieces later, but you don't have to until you're ready. But this is going to be a fun little guy that can you know, just walk around. And my goal is to take him to conventions and to events and just have something that can run and jump on your shoulder and kind of peek at you. Uh, I love the idea of puppetry. I love bringing things to life with movement, uh, especially things that didn't exist in real life, that were only CG. That apparently happens a lot. <laughs> now, my latest project was R2BQ, a functioning 18-inch Weber grill droid. And this pretty much came about because I learned that Weber makes an 18-inch grill, and I happen to know that the dimensions of R2-D2's body is 18 inches. So after kind of cobbling together a frame and just trying to figure out how do I put this together in a, in a safe way, in a way that's going to keep me protected, but in a way that you can have the view of something uh, that's, you know, coming together from the Star Wars universe. A lot of plywood, a lot of, you know, MDF and uh, just, it's really fun just tackling all those problems one at a time and having a deadline like the 4th of July. I was able to get R2BQ all put together in time and he was able to grill up some hamburger and carne asada. It was very delicious. My, my wife was not surprised uh, that I turned a barbecue into an R2D2 at all. No surprise there. I feel so lucky and so blessed to share this life with someone who just not only compliments but uh, encourages you know my, this nerdy side this maker side because i know not everybody has that and she puts up with k2so standing in you know the garage uh, watching over everything you know when i look at pictures like this and all of the memories of the things that i've made sometimes they last a long time the the objects and sometimes they're around just for a season it's it's so much fun getting to spend and share this with my family is definitely the, the, the best blessing of all, by far. Darren, my friend, thank you so much for sharing your workspace, your droid projects, and especially that barbecue grill. Now, everyone go to Instagram, check out Dr. Sci-Fi, give him a follow, and you'll be able to keep up with all of his great projects. We hope you really enjoyed this Geek of the Week episode. We hope that it brought you some inspiration, gets you motivated to go out to your shop or your workspace and build something out of nothing. <laughs> <laughs>